What's up, everybody? This is Fidel from How We Talk Podcast. What's going on, guys? I'm Izzy. And here today, by popular demand, <laughs> that's right. we have Fernando Vasquez, also known as How's it Mr. Going, guys? Olympia 626. Yep, yep, yep. Who else do we have in the in the in the house tonight? We have our. He brought he brought his friends. He brought his <laughs> crickets. Jimmy, Jimmy the cricket. Jimmy <laughs> the cricket. Yeah. Is it Jimmy or Jiminy? Jiminy. G- Jiminy. Yeah. Jiminy. 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 One the of those. Pinocchio, right? Yeah. Yeah, Pinocchio. yeah, yeah. Fucking Jiminy. cricket. Had to bring bro, him along, bro. Had to yeah. bring him along. What's that little cricket from uh, Mulan? Mush, I Mushu? No, I Mushu. Have no, no idea. idea. Anyway. No idea. That is, that's not a cricket from Mulan, isn't that the... The dragon, but sh- there's a little lucky cricket. Is it? Because the, the Chinos, they believe in lucky crickets. Anyways. Or they eat them. That's, that's, uh, that's Fernando's uh, conscience right there. Yeah. <laughs> he brought his conscience. Getting ready. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, dude? Not too much, man. Welcome back, man. I to come back. You know, what's Thank funny you. is uh, last time I came, yeah. I was smaller than both of you guys. Now oh, I came back and I'm bigger than you guys are smaller than me. <laughs> so if you're wondering if this really is the same guy, <laughs> it, is. <laughs> it is, dude. Yeah. It is. You were, well, you were leaned out. It was like, what, weeks before the, uh, yeah. the competition, right? Yeah. I was like in, in the 60s, bro. Yeah. I'm at 205 now. 205? 205? Yeah. B, what? That's for real. Bulking season is, in, is in, we're in, in season. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. both, all of us literally transformed. <laughs> yeah. So for sure. We flipped the page. Yeah, for man. Sure. You know, um, it wasn't that long ago. What was it? Maybe three months ago? Well, yeah. When we did it. Three three yeah, because three it was. Four. We signed up after he was on the show. That's right, yeah. Uh, I, think so yeah. I think four months. Four months? Say, yeah. Maybe four months. All right. So so you gained weight. Yeah. We lost weight. We lost it, yeah. So I, I took the weight from you. <laughs> <laughs> and today, today's actually my last day of the three months. How do you, how'd you do? How'd you, did. wait, how did he do? He did pretty good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He enjoyed himself a burger. Yeah, <laughs> did you? A nice burger. He today, was dying yeah. for it. When I picked up my son, he goes, "Yeah, man, I just want some meat, <laughs> <laughs> some steak." Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Uh, uh, so today was my last day. Yeah, I'm gonna take a week off because I, I still want a big, bigger steak, a juicy steak. I'm gonna get back on it because now, just uh, mentally, I, I'm in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, that was one of the things. Uh, what because what i gained from it was learning how to eat you know mm. it's more of like a balance right that's what the main thing is yeah. learning how to eat learning you've seen the different diets i gave you guys yeah you know you guys can to manipulate into your own yeah right you can keep it steady mm-hmm. you know that's the ultimate goal for everybody yeah so yeah i mean uh since i've since i've done it i remember i told you it was like two weeks ago i think yeah. or three weeks ago mm. and so in those three weeks um i knew i was gonna gain some weight you know because i was going die hard working out the the meal planning so I knew I was going to gain weight. Now I'm thinking like, oh, I'm probably going to gain like 10 pounds, you know. I've only gained two or three pounds. No, that's not and bad. And I'm teeter-tottering with two or three pounds. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm st- I still want to go lower. So uh, I yeah. might either, if I can't do it on my own, I might have to sign up again yeah. and do another, like th- maybe this time the body transformation. Oh, yeah. Is it the body, what is it called? Total 12 transformation? Week, 12 week transformation. The 12 week transformation. So I might do that one. Yeah. I need to get to that 205. You dropped about 20 pounds, right? 20 something? Total? 30? Th- no, total was like, 39 i think yeah i went from two you did yeah <laughs> yeah I, I was at two two like 68 no yeah. no not 268 248 and i went down to 220 so yeah. 20 uh what was it you do the math a lot oh it wasn't 39 it was 28 almost 30 pounds. pounds yeah almost 30 pounds Dang. That's good. Yeah, he dropped a good amount too. Yeah, it was twenty. Well, I I weighed in at two ninety nine, and then uh my goal weight was uh one seventy five, and today I checked in at uh one seventy three. All right. Yeah. So beat nice. it. Yeah. I beat it. And then you feel better. Oh yeah. I ran. I ran a five k. Oh, I seen that. Like nothing, dude. Yeah. I, I like, couldn't sh- even do a five k. My yeah. life depended on it. Yeah. I just, but it was like I, I, cause I lost the weight. I feel better about myself. You know, yeah. like I, I ran the five k. I'm gonna yeah. do another one in a, in mm-hmm. a week or two. Yeah. You want to join? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's in West Covina. It's local. You, you can know, walk it. You can walk it. I'm going to have to walk it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lose all my gains. Yeah, no. <laughs> no That's no. funny. I'm not, I'm not an outdoor walk, uh, runner or walker. I don't yeah, know why. Yeah, you told me that. I don't know why. He, he's the, a treadmill guy. The treadmill? Boom, I'm focused. Yeah, I like the treadmill better. Yeah. yeah. You stay in one place. Yeah. You know? yeah. I'm thinking about getting one so I could watch, like, watch the Dodger game and just do actually do something and not... Drink a beer yeah. while you watch yeah. the game. Just run. And just run. Well, run and drink a beer. Yeah. You know, that'll be my go-to. Triple tasking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Triple tasking, that's right. <laughs> so last time we had you on, um, you're getting ready for 
what was it called again? The USA. The USA. The USA's. No. I was going to say the ALCs. I don't know what that is. No. I was making USA's. up events. The USA's. Yeah. Um, walk us through that, dude. It was a it was a crazy experience. Um, I did a show prior to that a week before. Right. Um, things didn't go as planned for that show, so I was I was pretty upset. Um, I didn't I didn't bring my best, you know, and I was I was supposed to bring my best. Yeah. So then this way I can go into the USA's feeling confident. Right. But it it, it didn't happen that way, yeah. you know. So um, I made some changes going into that week, and then um, every day. I was seeing changes, you know, so I'm like, okay, I'm feeling better. Yeah. And I'm looking good every day, sending pictures to the coach. Boom, boom, boom. Um, and then I get to the USA's to go do my check-in. And then um, one of the head judges who's who who's judged me at shows before he comes, he I try to ignore him. Yeah. Because he, he, he judged the last show that I was at, you know. Oh, okay. And I'm like, I was probably thinking, man, what's this guy doing here? You yeah. Know? Yeah, he's got muscle memory. I don't yeah, want him to remember. Yeah, what's, what's, he, what's he doing here, you know? This guy, yeah. he didn't do good last week, you know? So I was, like, trying to avoid him. Yeah. But he happened to see me. He comes up to me. He goes, hey, man. I'm like, hey, what's up, you know? And then he goes, hey, I hope you didn't bring that, that guy from last week to the show. Oh, man. Straight up. You yeah. Know? He's like, you know, these, these last two shows you did, that, that's not the overall champ that I met last year. Yeah. And he goes, I know that overall champ's inside you. And the, these two shows that you did he um he wasn't he wasn't there yeah you know so i, I hope you you made some changes and, and you brought your best to this show mm -hmm. so i assured him that i did i made some changes and that i wasn't going to disappoint yeah you know so i checked in um and i got there on thursday so thursday i was there friday i was there and then saturday so every day i was just antsy i couldn't sleep yeah in vegas yeah in vegas yeah eating and then um dehydrating um, carbing up you know so i was getting lightheaded at one point just because of the diet yeah you know mm -hmm. so i was just trying to lay down just try to focus um so then finally the day came um and then we did um we did pre-judging so pre-judging is when the groups come out mm -hmm. um there was about 28 guys in my in my class yeah so there was four groups um so they did each group i was the third group no 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 was i second or third um so then after that everyone goes in then they do the call outs so you want to be in the first call outs mm -hmm. okay the first call outs and then in the first call outs you want to be center stage so it's center stage is first and the person on the side is second and then the other side is third yeah so the pros are going to be the center and then the one next to them top two turn pro mm -hmm. um so i didn't get called in the first call outs you know um Going into this, I, I kind of expected it because I didn't have the size. You know, I wasn't as big as... I seen these guys, I was like, man, yeah. these guys are giants. Did, and they, you, did you get there and realize that? No, I, I kind of had a feeling, you know. Um, but I, I just wanted to bring my best. Yeah. I wanted to bring my best. Um, this way, I didn't I didn't leave there like, oh, man, you know, like the other two shows. Right. I wanted to go in there and just leave, leave something mm -hmm. behind, you know. Um, so then... But yeah, these guys that were competing, I mean, they, they've been they've been doing this for years, 10 years, 9 years. So guys the same the same weight as me, mm -hmm. looking like they weigh 30 pounds more. Yeah. I look like a twig next to them, you know. <laughs> but um so the first call outs they called, you know, and I was I wasn't so sad about it, you know. I just stood there still looking at the judges. Um then they do the second call outs, you know. And nope, they didn't hear my name. I'm like, "Man, I'm about to get last place, fourth call outs, you know." Yeah. So they they're doing third call outs and they call the first guy they call the second guy. They call the third guy, the fourth guy. And I'm like, man, so he's looking at everybody. And then I'm staring at the main guy straight in the eye. You know, I'm staring at him. And he's just staring and he's staring. And then finally he calls my number. Yeah. So and my uh, my brother-in-law recorded it. And you see me just, oh, yes. I was happy. Yeah. You know? And anybody who, who competes, like, why the heck is he happy? You know? Yeah. He didn't even, but it, it was more than just winning to, for me, you know? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't want to end up finishing last like I, I did a lot to get to that point right you know i made the changes that i need to and i didn't i didn't end up you know at, at last place you yeah know? blanking so, out right exactly so i was happy um so i ended up getting third call outs and out of the third call outs i got fourth you know so and then they did the fourth call out so out of 28 people i took 17th okay you know so which isn't too bad yeah i mean obviously first or second was was the goal mm -hmm. but it didn't happen um so then we went back, ate some burgers, um, then we went back for finals and then just finished up the show and then that was it pretty much. Yeah. You know, so 
Um, I learned a lot from that. I got a lot of experience. <clears throat> um, it opened my eyes up to where I where I, where I'm at compared to all these these top level guys. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah. So oh yeah. So as I was leaving the show, mm -hmm. the same judge sees me. Okay. You know, and I walked up to him and I was like, "Hey, I'm you know, uh, I'll see you again." He goes, "Hey." much much better presentation i'm yeah. very pleased yeah you came in good yeah but you need more size he told me that you know yeah. so he's like put on some more size and you'll be dangerous for in the years to come yeah so i i took those words in and i was i was happy because it wasn't more like he pretty much told me i looked like crap yeah the last two shows yeah, yeah. and nice words you know yeah to you know you, you looked amazing just put on some size and you'll, you'll do well yeah and basically just you got to be consistent you know mm -hmm. so after that my my thought process was okay i've been competing taking six months off to grow and then competing taking six months off to grow but i haven't really let my body develop and grow mm -hmm. give it a good amount of time so now this year what i'm doing is i'm going to give myself up to two years to really 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 grow mm -hmm. without breaks without cutting weight and just full blown yeah. you know and then i'm going to go back and hopefully yeah it may be my year so go. 20 year 2020 man we'll, we'll see what happens yeah go for that long that long haul and yeah bulk up and really do it a lot a lot a lot of eating yeah you know so that's always good invite us yeah we'll be good man <laughs> maybe we'll join him yeah i know right? <laughs> yeah, <come on. laughs> so so that's that's your plan 2020 that's my uh, taking th think things can change i, I mean I, that, that's just what i say now yeah yeah but we'll, we'll see where where life directs us you right. know yeah you know um the judges for the for the competitions are those guys all ex bodybuilders the majority of them yeah. some of them aren't or, or some coaches. of them are some of them just been in the industry for a long they've judged so many people yeah um a lot of pros the the, the judges at that main event have judged pros like the olympia and all that so mm -hmm. um so yeah it was it was um you get people the judges from local shows too mm -hmm. you know they, they've been there so see everybody different yeah. different judges um for these competitions how much of this is just i mean last time we talked we you, you talked a lot about the physicality of it your training what you put into it how much of it is mental going into these competitions oh i, I think it's all mental yeah, yeah if, if your mind's not in it then you're not you're not going to get anywhere in the sport yeah yeah you're what, gonna, what gonna, can that what can that do to you when when you're not here what, what can it do to you on stage I retain a lot of water yeah cortisone levels shoot to the roof you start swelling up oh, you know yeah. so may, maybe that may have been something that uh, what happened to me in the other shows i was stressing out maybe i don't look good i mean mm -hmm. i could have been many things yeah but i looked watery on stage compared to the guys who were, who, who beat me yeah and i was i was mad mm -hmm. i was mad you know yeah because i i go from winning back-to-back -back shows right winning the overall last year first place first place to basically just taking the dump this year you know yeah. i was mad and it, it hit me hard yeah you know because i know i could have looked better you know so um it could have been anything you know mm -hmm. but if you have if, you're, if your mind's not there you start stressing you start retaining water yeah and then if if you don't believe that you're the best man looking on stage you're not gonna be looking your best yeah but if you believe it in your heart if you believe it in your mind and you're going on there that you look the best you're going to look a lot to 20 times better right you know because you're going to present yourself in that at, at that national <clears throat> level at that at the usa's i i pretty i own that stage i mm -hmm. felt like i owned it yeah you know if you've seen the videos i, I just the way i was posing oh yeah i felt i, I felt like i lived there you know yeah yeah so yeah, it's just a whole different attitude in person when i stepped on that stage yeah are most of these guys are, are they all amateurs or are any of them pros? All of, all of them are amateurs. All amateurs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until you until you get first or second at, at at that show, then you go to the pro level. All right. Yeah. And that's a whole different tournament, a whole different competition. Yeah. I I had been seeing like your your posts and stuff, and especially like when you were going dry, I was like, damn, dude, this guy has it for sure. Yeah. You know, just no, and that that's another thing. Yeah, you see people see me like man this guy's a, and then to think there's guys 20 times better than yeah they're like what the heck right yeah man yeah that's why i had asked um did you know that prior like going into it or was it like a shock when you got there you know it was, i don't know because w when i when i saw the pictures after i was like dang yeah he's, i mean <laughs> compared to me you're way bigger but uh i was like those guys are big yeah, yeah. massive you know? so so massive you had you have uh 
some work to do. And then from 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 then to what would you say a few weeks, you put on at least uh, twenty something oh, pounds. Forty. Forty. Well, I mean, the <laughs> <laughs> you know what's well, definitely easier to put them on than to take them off, I right? Went, I went from one sixty to two two oh six. Damn! In a matter of four days. Four days. No. Yeah. 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 I was in I four was days just watching that progress, dude. All I was hating tacos. life. I was just that. I just my I, I splurged. Yeah. You know, but I had I was holding so much water. I, I was like a water yeah. buffalo. Yeah. It was very uncomfortable. It, it got so uncomfortable. It was just really annoying. Yeah. Um, I had to stay home from from work one day because I couldn't move. Um, I had to wear sandals for uh, was it my who's was it a birthday party? I think it was my son's birthday. Your yeah. toes were all swollen and everything. everything. Yeah. So I had to wear sandals. None of my clothes was fitting me. Um, so for my son's birthday, I had a wardrobe malfunction. The, the wardrobe I was supposed to wear. Yeah. Nope. So I ended up wearing a a, a dress looking like shirt, you know. Like a little mumu. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you know? <laughs> nothing, nothing fit me. Yeah. So I was like, man, this is mad. So it didn't the water and the swelling didn't subside maybe till like two, three weeks later. Yeah. Then I finally got it down to one eighty six and then from there I started building clean, mm -hmm. solid weight. Yeah. And I'm back to two oh six, but I'm not I'm not looking like how I was before. Yeah. Yeah. It was so, so you just gained all that weight just from that eating and not doing cardio, just taking the time off. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, those first four days, it was it was just all the all the sodium, the, yeah. the water, you know, everything mm. was just puffed up. Yep. You know, you got swollen. Mm-hmm. Damn. That chalo. It was bad. <laughs> but there I was. There I was eating, so. eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was fun though, right? It was fun. You know, <laughs> I was dieting for six months. You know, I was, but, you know, it was worth it. You got to. I was, I was dying for food. And now you're back on meal preps. Yeah. Okay. Clean, clean food to yeah. gain weight. You know, so um, I'm not I'm not having as many cheap meals like I did last year. Yeah. I think I was having one every night, to be honest. Really? Yeah. But um, this what's time, a cheap meal for you? Um, a full carrot. <laughs> 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 now I would I would say like uh, like Taco Bell pizza yeah. tacos nice. yeah yeah you know tacos for sure pizza for tacos. buffalo <laughs> wings yeah oh yeah for sure you know so i was eating a lot of that last year no limit or just kind of nah, no limit yeah, yeah. yeah. but this time around I, I'm, I'm keeping it pretty pretty clean yeah every day eating my meals a lot of rice a lot of meat whether it's turkey chicken beef steak um yams now incorporating yams a lot of food though yeah yeah so this time, this plan, uh, your two-year plan, you're gonna, you're, it's you know, you're gonna focus on getting wider, yeah. and then uh, towards the end, just kind of cut it down. Yeah, is that well, what it? I, I have to make weight at one seventy, so whatever weight I get to, I have to bring it back down. Yeah. Uh, what do you, What do you expect to get to as far as your highest when you when you peak at your highest weight? Honestly, I have no idea. I've never I've never been able to crack, um, two hundred and four pounds. Two hundred and four. Yeah, and never, you already cracked it. I've already I got up to two hundred nine. Damn. But I can teach you. Clean, clean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> clean wise, you know. Beer. Yeah. Right. But then um, I got to two hundred nine as I was peaking. Mm -hmm. Not with, not with after the show. Yeah. Like weeks after the show, as I was eating. But now my weight's coming back down. As no, no matter how much I eat. Yeah. It just that so, metabolism already it, working. Yeah. It itself. just drops. You know. Yeah. I got down to as low as two hundred two pounds the other week. Mm -hmm. What the heck, man? I just ate sixteen cups of rice. Damn. What the heck am I losing weight? Yeah. You know. I lost weight, yeah. you know. I even had a burger that day and everything. Is nope. <laughs> yeah, so my yeah, metabolism just to the roof, you know. Yeah. It's a blessing and a curse, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I know how that goes. <laughs> during during the uh, yeah, during the the whole um, training up to the the USA's right. Your your mental. I saw a lot of your posts um, about support from your girl, right? Because some days you were you were just off yeah right um where where because you were working up to that your your mind's just focused right and, and you know all these uh, endorphins and stuff where are you training as hard and are you still having those uh not thoughts but just those mental you know what, what yeah, would the no, word I, be? I know what you mean you know what i mean um when when you're dieting and you you're on low carbs you're on a, in a, in a cal uh, caloric deficit mm -hmm. um your mind starts to lose itself you yeah. know mm -hmm. so you either 
get all emotional, get depressed, um, or you're just hungry, yeah. you know, basically. So a lot of that time that I was feeling like that, you know, very emotional, um, craving stuff, you know, and then you just, you just feel like in a dark place, you yeah. know, like what the heck, you know, and yeah. I need to get out of this. And sometimes it's just hard. And then knowing that you're basically running on fumes and you still have to do stuff to get, there's still work that needs to be get done, you know, and no one's going to help you do it. You know, so it's very stressful. And then to top it off, you you got a business you're running, you got kids, mm -hmm. and it, it takes a toll on you, you know. Or you break down eventually. Right. You know, yeah. so at that point, it's, you know, you just, you have to keep going. You remember what the goal is, and you remember that only you can can get yourself out of this and then keep pushing. You know, at the end of the day, no one's going to hold your hand. Right. You know, so I, 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 during this prep was the hardest prep that I've been through. And I was I was fighting that all the time. Um, but to answer your question, now it's a little easier because I have a lot of food in me, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm not hungry. Yeah. You know, I'm not all depressed because I'm starving. Yeah. But um, as far as my mind state, uh, my mindset, it, it's 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 a lot stronger. You know, yeah. Cause that that prep was was brutal, very very brutal. And she'll tell you, you know, yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Um, but we pushed through it, and like I said, now I I have a goal. You know, a bigger goal. And we're just gonna we're gonna make it happen. We will make it happen. Yeah, you know, it's gonna happen. So, and there's nothing that can stop me. So I'm gonna just keep on fighting unless God tells me no more. Then I'm gonna give it all I got. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. I had a once again. I'm nowhere on his level, <laughs> but I I've experienced that where not not you know full full on depression, but that that mind was like ah, oh, you know, it was, it was yeah. the sadness or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then uh, well, nope, I gotta go to the gym. Yeah, you know that was th that to me. That was like the only cure, you know. Just go run, go run it out. Yeah, you know, go sweat it out. Go, you d lose all your energy out there, you know. Yeah, and uh, that's what I did. You know, I think yeah. I think um, you, you keep saying that you're not at his level, but I mean, there's a lot. M the majority of the people aren't at his level, right? Okay, but I think that what he, with the message that he's that he's putting out there. Is the anybody can use it? It's it's the same, just like you said right now. You know, you, you know, you're out there, and only you can do it. You got to go back and think about your your goal, right? When why you started oh, yeah. this, like these are the kind of things that I learned and yeah. I picked up from it. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and so sure. in, in in actuality, you are on my level. Yeah, you're mentally, pushing through. Yeah, I mean, you're mentally, pushing yeah, through. Right. Le, le, more than you know, mm -hmm. more than yeah. you know, you're pushing through. Yeah, I had I had a lot of those. Oh, I'm not gonna go today. I'm tired. Yeah, and then and then I tricked my mind. To thinking, well, that's when you're supposed to go. Get up and go. Right. And that's yeah. what I did. You know? Well, it's, it's easy to convince yourself not to work out oh, yeah. <laughs> and not to eat, right? Yeah. It's easy. It's really easy. It's hard to not do all that stuff, to right. convince yourself See, otherwise. Right now, it's harder. It can be harder for me. Yeah. Because I have no competition that I'm doing anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So technically... I don't have to work out. You don't tomorrow. have to. Can, I don't have to do I can anything. Take a day off. I don't have you, to diet. You, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, I feel that this is harder for me than actually being on prep because now to keep it up, I have to keep it up so I don't get fat. I don't eat everything in sight. The seafood diet, you know. Yeah. So I I, I have to be more strict on myself now than when I was on prep. Well, some old an, 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 a coach that I'm good friends with. His name is Sam. He's out of um, Orange County. Mm -hmm. Um, last year when I, when we used to talk a lot, we still do, but, um, during that prep, when he told me, um, after the prep was over, he goes, he tells me, he goes, you need to treat your off season harder than your prep, mm. you know? And yeah. I thought about that. I was like, man, that's deep. You know, it, it, it makes it, a lot it of ma sense. Was, it makes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. And since then, that's how I've treated my off season, you know, mm -hmm. you, you have to be harder on yourself yeah. after your, after your your show you know yeah you got you got to keep yourself in check well that's where everything can go wrong i mean when when you feel like oh you know what like i have a uh, two years to come you know your goal is two years right that's yeah. when you're going to compete again so now you're like ah, i can mess up this weekend or, or for two weeks go out on vacation and not have to be strict because i got two years to plan ahead it's i can do it that's a, it, anything can happen and you could just let it all, all go in four days <laughs> yeah <laughs> in four days four right? days yeah so yeah. Uh, one one thing, because we would recap with each other during during our other shows, and we would talk about the diets and how you doing. And, yeah. And one thing that he said that I it didn't click to me was uh, that I'm not eating for um, I'm not eating for comfort or for taste You're not or eating for, for style. satisfaction, uh, eating for results. Right. Yeah. Right. Fuel. You know. Yeah. And uh, 
now that I think about it now and just just going through it and then I'm going to be continuing it. Mm -hmm. I could easily go back to eating how I was eating before, and that was bad. But I don't feel like I want to, which is a good thing. You know what I mean? I I, I feel like I could continue this, whether I continue a a, a workout plan or not. I could continue right. eating that way. No. I'm, yeah. it's it's already in in my head, you know. So yeah, and what I, what I had told you was uh, that I'm no longer going to eat for pleasure, even though you do sometimes. You're gonna, you, you yeah, have to, right. but. The mentality is don't eat for pleasure, it's eat for fuel. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was doing. The mm -hmm. whole time I was doing that, uh, that was my, my mind mindset was that. Mm -hmm. Eat for fuel. Yeah. If I was going to eat shitty, drink all these beers, it's going to be hard for me to hit the gym, you know? Yeah. And then hit the treadmill. It was just, it's, it's a fact. No. It's just hard. It's a struggle. <laughs> I Hashtag the struggle's real. The struggle's <laughs> real. I had been, I'd never sweat so much in my life, bro. Just walking we did a we did the truck show right yeah we uh we were working this truck show and i was just standing there all i had to do was just stand there and, and uh watch the booth and i was sweating and it was embarrassing <laughs> titty drenched. sweat yeah that titty sweat <laughs> back sweat and it was just because my bot my metabolism was just yeah you know? man and then and then i my customers would do you need are you okay do you need water and i have to explain no i'm on this regimen and and you know it's just i'm sweating <laughs> just let me sweat. it's, a, it's working it's working it's working. It's, yeah. it's working i would i would feel the most weirdest part sweat dude like for some reason like i call it my snout i don't know what this whole area it's is, not, yeah it's, i would feel cold because the wind and, and it was sweating you know yeah and then i that's when i started noticing in my face was getting thin and everything and just it was crazy wow. it was crazy you know it was intense and Super here we intense. are and here we are and here we are man making it happen yeah. yeah well that's good man i mean hey you know <clears throat> you're not gonna win them all but the good thing is that you're focused still and then hasn't it hasn't depleted you yeah so you're still there and you're gonna continue you know you just set yourself another goal and then that's what we should be doing always be setting goals for ourselves and reaching those goals yeah and you did it so that's great that's right. good to hear I, I think you mentioned something about um your your son your oldest uh about uh talking about like winning and losing yeah. remember did he did he ask it about oh yeah he had, how'd you do papa how'd you do you yeah. know yeah i'm like oh it didn't go so well you know he goes why you didn't win <laughs> <laughs> gonna tell when i when i won when i won uh when was it fifth place at that show that he he never lets it go <laughs> you know <laughs> oh, you didn't win first you yeah. took fifth yeah they're better than you they're like man you know, oh, so shoot. Yeah, but he he just asked. Yeah, so all he said, "Why didn't you win? Why didn't you win?" Yeah. So I explained to him, you know. So I'm like, "Yeah." So now no more, no more, uh, no more shows. So you're not gonna work out anymore. Yeah. I'm like, "Oh, I'm still gonna work out." And he goes, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Sometimes yeah. he's at home, and I go hit the gym. You yeah. Know? Yeah. He wants he, daddy time. Yeah. So yeah. I gotta go work, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, a, su a subject I want to get into. Last time you were here. We talked for a good, a good hour maybe af yeah. after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After we cut the the feed, um, it was pretty pretty heavy stuff. Um, and I said, I said, well, he had he had said, you know, that's the story, that's the story that he needs to tell. And I was like, yeah. oh, for sure, yeah, for sure, we need to get that story out there. Um, I think after you, it was just a reoccurring thing, depression. Yeah, depression uh some suicide stuff um and it, it was kind of like you you set that off kind of for us huh yeah more or less yeah yeah um that i think that's always been around but no one talks about it right obviously it's always been around no one talks about it but right. i mean just to go back on that you know we were texting about a week ago or two weeks ago and you said i don't know if you could talk about this or not but you said 12 years is coming and oh yeah and i'm good and so I, I was like, great, you know, because that was a goal. You did it 12 years. But I don't know the story behind that. No. And I didn't want to ask in text message. I was like, let's <laughs> wait for the show. Right. So what is the story behind that? Yeah, well, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that leads up to all that, mm -hmm. you know. But and when I turned 18, I was pretty much, I was uh, getting in trouble a lot with the law. Yeah. I was catching a case, so I would get my probation extended or more years added to it. Um, so... It, it, everything that prior to that i would i would blame you know so basically to rewind it all back you know yeah. where it all started um when i was born my mom had me 
you know um so at the time she she was sprung out on drugs she couldn't afford me yeah. so she sends me to mexico this this is a story that i heard okay okay um the story she told me when she called me years later and told me what happened um so i'm i'm in mexico and my grandparents and my aunt were in juarez you know and then um they would always tell me like oh um you're gonna get picked up you're gonna go to the states you know yeah so then um my mom's aunt, my mom's sister goes um, when i'm three years old and she goes picks me up and then she takes me home yeah so for for 13 years i'm, I'm 12 years excuse me i'm living with her and her husband um in my whole life i grew up thinking this is my mom yeah because I, I didn't know mm -hmm. so i'm here calling her mom but i'm calling her husband a uh, deal yeah you know didn't really re register it, it didn't click yeah but that i thought it was normal yeah um so here i am calling her mom calling him Theo, and then um one day my mom calls me and my mom would come visit me yeah with um all these kids who i thought were my cousins yeah you know but in reality they're my brothers and sisters and you thought that was your tia yeah that was my aunt mm -hmm. you know so then um it was my eighth grade year she calls me i was on us uh, on a uh, winter vacation yeah and she calls me and she goes um mijo you know and i'm like oh how's it going tia you know and then um she was like hey i'm gonna tell you something so i'm like okay what's up yeah um so then she tells me the story you know she goes so she's not your mom i'm your mom yeah and i was like what shit i'm like what the heck yeah and i didn't know how to problem i'm only 12 like how do i process this you know right so i'm like oh okay she goes, but don't tell anybody you know i don't want nobody no one to know but i just want you to know you know but i'm gonna be going over there um in a couple weeks i'm like oh, okay so in the midst of all that i'm already getting in in, in some trouble with um the neighborhood kids here in azusa yeah. where i was where i pretty much grew up uh -huh. um and at the time, my mom, well, I call her my mom. Right. The aunt that was raising me, she was she was getting sick, so she was taking a lot of pills. Um, and a lot of the time, like, it was more of an addiction, you know, right. so she was taking pills. Like um, pain, pain pillars? Yeah. Uh, pain relievers? Um, so little by little, she wasn't all there, you know, mm -hmm. she started losing it. Um, so finally, my biological mom comes, and they see all these kids, so I'm like, oh, these are my brothers and sisters. Um so at the time i got caught with some weed you know yeah and then um i get into the house and then um um my aunt call her my aunt my mom my yeah. aunt so she i see her on the couch and then she goes man you're just causing me more stress i don't want you here um so i like i started crying i ran to my room i started packing my stuff and then my biological mom comes in she goes what happened she goes oh she says she doesn't want me here um she was like well where are you gonna go i'm like i don't know she goes come with me i'm yeah. like all right so that same day everyone left i went with her mm -hmm. on the car ride she lived in stockton it's close to san francisco yeah so on the way to stockton um i'm sitting in the passenger side and then she she gives me a beer you know she goes look you yeah. know i don't care what you do have fun do whatever you want but this is what i do and then she pulls out a sack of meth yeah boom I'm like, what's that? She goes, it's crystal. You've never tried it? I'm like, no. She goes, here, put some in your beer and drink some. Oh, I was like, are you sure? She goes, yeah. I'm like, all right. So I drink it. Yeah. She, she's done it, whatever. So I'm like, oh, man, it's already starting off to a good story, you know? Yeah. I'm all happy. I'm excited, man. I could do whatever I want. Right. So finally, um, we get to the, to the apartment. It was two bedrooms. And um, I have six brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're all live, sleeping in the living room, and then I, I get the bedroom with my two other brothers, and the complex was kind of ghetto. Yeah. You know, so, um, and then the next day, my aunt drives up there with with her husband, and they give me a final opportunity to go back. They're like, "Are you sure you want to stay here? Like this this lady's not right for you." Yeah. She's a druggie, and the, you you don't want this. Mm -hmm. But I was stubborn. I'm like, I get to do what I want, or do I want to go back to a house that set rules, you know? Right. Yeah. So I stayed, you know? So they cried. Um, they gave me some words, you know, just stay in school. Yeah. So I said, okay. So finally they left. Um, 
over there i don't know if you guys know about like the north siders and the south siders no, I uh, yeah so out here the south siders yeah I don't know, they got, got the, the whole 1513 the yeah right. we don't call yeah we'll call oh. it yeah <laughs> they know so you know yeah okay, okay. so I was out there and I, I didn't know anything about that at the yeah. time. You know, mind you, I'm just 12. I just knew everything down here. Mm -hmm. So I'm out there in my blue Debo slippers, walking around the complex, yeah. bald headed, you yeah. know, my little gangster ways. Yeah. And then hey, I'm coming down and then I see these two guys in red. Yep. You know, they, they just start circling me, and like looking me up and down. Mm -hmm. Like, what's up? You a scrap? I was like, what's a scrap? Yeah. You know, where you from? I'm like, well, I came from Azula, you know? I'm like, where's that at? That's LA, right? I'm like, as soon as I said, yeah, boom. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah. So they, they did me dirty. Yeah. And that was pretty much uh, every day, you know. Um, and I, I go back to my mom. Like, hey, what's a scrap? Why did I get jumped? You yeah. know, She's like a scrap is anyone who comes from from the Los Angeles area, you know. Yeah. So I learned real fast. Um, so that, that's how I was all the time over there. Um, and then my mom, she was it called. Um. She would always be on her stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. I would go with my friends, do whatever I wanted. Um, and then at the time she, time, she would force me to do it sometimes. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. Yeah, the drugs. Yeah. And then eventually she would just scold me to do it or whatever. And every time she was coming down, she's like a different person. Yeah. You know. So then she started feeding me in my head. Like, oh, um, my sister's going to an insane asylum because you left. She's taking more pills. So she's brainwashing me, like pr pretty much telling me like, She's pretty much going to die because you left. Yeah. Why'd you leave her? You know? Um, and every time she would come down, she would just talk bad about me. You know? You're not my son. You're not my blood. I don't know why I brought you here. Yeah. I'm going to send you back over there. Nobody likes you. I don't know how you're going to do it. So six months living there, that, that, that's what I started dealing with, you know? Just a whole different person yeah. than, than the lady that I met. Right. You know? And it was it was the drugs. Or maybe she was spiteful. And I don't I don't know what it was, you know? Yeah. But um, finally, one day I tell her, you're not going to send me back there. So the next day she wakes me up. She takes me to the Greyhound. She doesn't let me take any clothes. Mm -hmm. She gives me the ticket and just, I open the door, get out, and then she drives off. So then I have the ticket to the Greyhound. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what the heck to do with it, you know. So I show the people, and well, your bus is right there. Yeah. So here I am on the Greyhound going back to, to L.A., mm -hmm trying to figure out what the heck's going on you know yeah. i'm 13 now at the time um sorry so i land in la um i have no money you know and um i'm walking down the street and then some old cholo comes up to me he goes hey man you look lost yeah i'm like yeah i don't, I don't know where i'm at he goes um where are you trying to go i'm like west covina and he goes all right here's five bucks the metro's right there take take this line or whatever you call it yeah um and then it's going to drop you off in west covina the metro link yeah so then i get dropped off and then i have like 50 cents left and then i called some um so my mom's husband had a lot of family mm -hmm. so they weren't really my blood but they, they were still family right so i call them cousins yeah um so i called um one of them up they picked me up and then i get to their apartment mind you they're like in their early 20s mm -hmm. like 19 to like 20 24 yeah you know and i'm 13 so um i get to their apartment and then word gets out that i'm i'm, I'm over here yeah so they tell me like hey um your your uncle doesn't want you at the house so i'm like man what the heck am i gonna do yeah so they told me we'll, we'll let you live here we're not your parents we're not gonna tell you what to do you don't have to go to school if you want. Whatever you do is on you. Yeah. We're not responsible for you. We're just giving you a place to live pretty much. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, okay. So then the next day my mom calls. She calls everybody. She calls the cops. She calls everybody and tells every, tell they, she tells everybody that I ran away. Yeah. Mm. So she calls the, the place that I'm at. She goes, hey, is Fernando there? He ran away. So I'm like, grab the phone. I was like, I ran away? Yeah. Do you not remember that you took me to the Greyhound yesterday? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. You said you were going to go to an amusement park with your friends. That's why you don't have any clothes. Don't act stupid, blah, blah, blah. If you want to run away, stay over there. You're dead to me. Don't come looking for me. Don't come looking for your brothers and sisters. You have no family. You're dead. Bye. And that's the last time I've heard from her. To this, to day. this day. To this day. Wow. 
So then I'm like, man, you know, I'm like, what the heck? So then I, I call um, I call my mom. I'm like, I, you swear I can't live with you, you know? Like, what am I going to do? Yeah. So then she um, she comes over. She talks to me, and she tells me, like, yeah, he doesn't want you over there. Like, you left. Yeah. You know? So she enrolls me into school. That's your, your tia mom, right? Uh -huh. She enrolls me into school, um, and then she just tells me, like, there's not much I can do for you now, you know? Just graduate high school. Yeah. You know, stay in school. So I'm like, okay. So then, um, so then, um, as I'm a sophomore, yeah. Okay, as I'm a sophomore, um, I get a call, and then um, like, hey, Fernando, um, my my aunt died. My aunt died. Yeah. I'm like, what? Uh, yeah, they found her in, in the closet, like laid out on the floor. And I just ran to my room. I ran and I cried. And then everything that my mom was telling me when I was living with her, it all hit me. It's my fault. You know? It's so I, I All the guilt started coming back. You know? And it was my fault, you know? Um so I didn't know how to take it, Yeah, you know? And at that point, I, I, I felt like I had already lost everything. So when she passed, it's like... What do I have? What do I have? You know? And um, so I we went to the, the wake and um, the open casket. I probably only looked at her for five seconds. And to this day, I regret not just standing there longer. Mm -hmm. But it was it was too unreal for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was only what like sixteen, fifteen, um, and then, so then finally we go to bury her, and then finally when then they dropped her, I was just I was the last person there just crying, and just sad, and just like it was my fault. Yeah. What if I would have never left? Would she still be alive? You know, would she keep t keep taking all these pills because she was depressed? So after all that was done it's just you know i just i was going in high school just why even bother now you know yeah um but no i mean i stuck it out i graduated um and after i graduated i just felt like everything just started just falling down for me um i got a job and then i was there for f probably like six months and then finally i, I got my own place mm -hmm. got my own place um Right when I turned eighteen, I got I got my ID. Mm -hmm. Then after I got my ID, not even three three months into it, I get my first DUI. Oh, you know. So then I didn't learn my lesson. Two months later, I get my second. You know. So then I'm like, man, when I got my second, I just felt like everything just crashed on me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I started thinking about like if I had parents to to to, to to lean on none of this would ever happen to guide you you know i feel like i'm losing everything i'm about to lose my apartment i'm going to lose my truck yeah and then that's when everything just it hit me so i write a letter to my cousin um that i was staying we, we were, were roommates yeah i write a goodbye letter to him and um at the time also too i was i was kind of selling weed mm -hmm. you know so um i had lost the job after my second DUI. So yeah. all I was doing, I was just selling, you know, to, to make a living. I yeah. was just selling weed. Mm -hmm. um, so I took all the weed that I had. I took my duffel bag. Um, I popped a whole, a whole canister of Tylenol, and then I got a 12 pack. So then I was drinking that. Um, I got to some park in Hacienda Heights, and I had another letter that I set on the table, and then right before. Um, I, I texted everyone in my phone book goodbye, 
you know so i was at that point i just said it's done you know yeah. so i tried to suffocate myself with the with the trash bag but it was impossible mm -hmm. but i did take a knife with me and as much as i tried to stab my my stomach it just it wasn't going through you know and um i think by the time all that finally was over i probably blacked out from the pills and the beer mm -hmm. and i woke up and it's daylight and then kids were coming to the school i'm yeah. like what the heck how did i how did i end up here you know yeah so i got out real quick before the cops can come um and then my phone's dead so everybody's probably like this guy's Calling done texting you this guy's done you know yeah um so then i go back to the apartment and i just sit down and i charge my phone for a bit just to see who texts me back mm -hmm. and my um, everyone was texting where are you don't do this don't do that there's more to life um people need you you know and then all that was hitting me more and i'm like man everyone's lying yeah you know um and then my cousin's like hey i, I told the police that you're missing and I, I showed them the letter you know so they're looking for you um so and after that i just said man screw this so then I, I went to the liquor store and i bought some liquor and then um you know where the apartments are by in and out on Branca, yeah by south hills mm -hmm. so i pretty much walked all of that to the canyons by myself yeah. just swigging the liquor yeah you know um and the the plan was to jump off a cliff and just basically just finish it yeah easier way since i couldn't stab or suffocate myself um so I'm, I'm getting drunker as i'm going up listening to eminem all these depressing songs you know yeah. on repeat mm -hmm. making it worse yeah. um and I, I i i know i remember black getting close to blacked out because after that i didn't remember mm -hmm. but um this girl that i was talking to at the time when she found me she said that i had called her and told her i told her to come get me before i do something dumb yeah and that she said when she found me, I was pretty much laid out next to the the end, edge of the cliff, blacked out. Mm -hmm. So had I had rolled over, I probably would have been done. Yeah, you know. So she gets me. I get in the, in the car. They take me back. Um, and then I wake up the next day, and my cousins they're crying. A few other people came, you know, just asking me if I'm okay, if I need anything. Yeah. Um. Then I get a letter from the the police station. They, they sent my photo back i guess someone told them that they found me you know mm -hmm. so like, oh man they, everybody was really looking for me yeah so after i came back to my senses i was man i gotta i gotta figure something out yeah like why am i depressed you know why is, but i was always blaming my past mm -hmm. you know i was blaming my past so then i got into dealing other stuff which is ecstasy mm -hmm. you know and um after feeling like a nobody, I feel like I had nobody. Um, I started dealing this, and I started meeting new people, and I literally went from selling ten pills to a hundred pills to thousands of pills okay. in a matter of a couple months. Yeah. So I went from an apartment to a house in less than a year. You know, so I felt like on I was on top of the world. Right. Yeah. I was unstoppable. I'm like, who's gonna mess with me? You yeah. know. Meanwhile, are you actually doing the ecstasy too, or oh, just yeah. selling? No, yeah. I was doing it all. Yeah that going to parties going to raves mm -hmm. um as i was living at the new house <laughs> i would have parties there um and i end up overdosing one day um i took that i took cocaine um you know the date rape drug mm -hmm. so you're, you're only supposed to take a cap yeah i ended up drinking half a bottle <sighs> so the next day we we're supposed to go to a rave um i wake up in the hospital on sunday yeah I remember waking up once, and I just felt like every, people were holding me down. All I seen was a light and a bunch of people next to me. Mm -hmm. Maybe that when I was, they said that's when I was in the ICU. Yeah. And I was trying to get up, and the doctors were trying to contain me. Yeah. Um, so they put me back to sleep, and then I wake up in the recovery room. And then I'm like, I'm trying to, what the heck, what am I doing here? I got a rave to go to. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm telling the doctor, like, hey, let me go. I got places to be. Yeah. And they're like, man, what are you talking about? And then, um my son's mom at the time um she goes what are, what are you talking stay there what are you doing yeah you overdosed you know do you not see where you're at I'm yeah. 
I'm, but I wasn't all there in my head. Mm -hmm. I was still on drugs, right? You know. And she goes, "All your friends that you were supposed to go to the rave to, they went to the rave. They didn't even come to the hospital with you. Yeah. Where are they at? Mm -hmm. You know." And I was like, what "The heck!" And that thing started clicking to me a little bit. Like, yeah, yeah. you're right. You know. Um. So I was, I was in a coma, and then um, all these people came to see me, mm -hmm. and they were um, my aunt's husband, and he came with some some new woman. And then other people, mm -hmm. you know, and I just remember waking up and they're all there in the room and I was, I was mad. I'm like, what are you guys doing here? They're like, oh, you know, we heard the news. I'm like, what news? I'm like, where were you guys when I needed you? Yeah. You know, where were you guys when I needed you when my mom died? Or where were you guys? You guys were nowhere in sight. I have to die for you guys to come help me. I'm like, I want all you guys out of here. You guys mean nothing to me. Mm -hmm. So then they all left. No, not, so that opened more of a like anger up in me, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. So then I get out, then I go back to the house, and I, I start thinking a little bit, you know, like man, he's got a bunch of fake friends, you know. Yeah. Um. So in the midst, I mean, I'm still dealing. Um. At the time, people I was dealing to, you know, people from Riverside, San Bernardino County, Lancaster. All of this area, Inland Empire, people mm -hmm. from Vegas. Yeah. You know, so I was selling them by thousands, just letting them go. Everywhere. Everywhere. Um, and I live right by the West Covina Courthouse. <laughs> literally. In That's their crazy. backyard. Yeah. Doing the they damn thing. They couldn't sniff you out, huh? No. Tony <laughs> Montana, you know? <laughs> but um yeah, so I mean I would leave my door open, like yeah. nothing, you know, I just who's gonna stop me? If right. I get stopped, no one gets anything. Yeah. That's when you felt like like uh yeah, you said Tony I, Montana. I, felt like I finally felt like somebody. Yeah. I had all these people in my house all the time. All the money that I had would go to drugs. Yeah. Would go to 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 whatever strip. We'd go to strip clubs. Would go. I would buy people things. I would give everything. You know. You have a purpose in life. Yeah. You know. I was just helping people. You here? You want money here? Boom. Yeah. You want to do something here? Let's go. You know. So I was just that was my life. You know, mm -hmm. drugs, alcohol. Um, and then finally one day I'm supposed to have a kickback. I have the door open. I'm in my drawers. I'm going to the to the laundry room, and then I just hear everybody on the floor. This Fontana PD. I'm like, man, get the. F oh, I thought it was my friend, so yeah. I I go and I'm. Oh, yeah. they're, they're all with the rifles. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, I couldn't run. They got me first. They threw me on the ground. Everyone in the house, they they, they gaffled up. Yeah. And then um, my, I'm 19, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my thing wasn't, you got to hide stuff, different houses. You got, I had everything in the damn yeah, house, you yeah, know. Yeah. My room had Tony Montana pictures, Scarface. <laughs> so they go in there and your like, model. yeah. yeah. So I'm like, and they, I go in, they go in there and like, I'm assuming this is your room, smart guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's my room. You know, so they found a little bit over t uh, 10,000 ecstasy pills, damn. gun, a lot of money. Um, so, I mean, I obviously I, I took the blame. Yeah. I told them, just leave everybody here, like let them go. They have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Um, so they let people go. Then I end up going to county. Um, my roommate at the time, I see him in there. I was like, they got you? Yeah. He goes, yeah, man. I'm like, how'd they get you? And then he started telling me. And I'm just, you know, I'm like, I want to see what happened. Yeah. So as he pulled out of the driveway, they rolled up on him. Yeah. But they called him by his name, you know. I can't say his name, but you know they say his name. He he rolls out, he pulls over, and then he gets out of the car. You know, and they're like, "We know what you have, and you know you know what you're working with him." Yeah. They found some of my pills in his car, and they found weed. So they take him to the park, and they had him call me. I want you to call Fernando and ask him if he still has pills. Yeah. You know. So he calls me, and I still remember he called me. Hey man, my friends loved your pills. Do you have any more? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh bro, I got a lot. Yeah. How much do you need? Yeah. You know. And he goes, all right, cool. Let me hit you back. And then, yeah, sure enough, three hours later is when they got me. So I'm like, wait a minute. So you called me to tell. So you pretty much snitched on me. Yeah, yeah. R.A.T. Oh, man. So I, I I, let him go. Yeah. He bailed out. But as soon as he got home, he got it. You know, <laughs> he got it from the people that were still yep. there. Um. So then I couldn't get released because I still had warrants from the DUIs that I wasn't <coughs> taking care of. Right. 
I got those DUIs, and then when I was uh, dealing, I got pulled over for no tags, and I had weed in my car. So I, I was just building up a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to I had to serve all those warrants before I could get out. Mm -hmm. So then finally, three months later, I get out, um, and then the guy, the detective who busts me, he calls me. He goes, "Hey, I haven't followed your case yet. You know, I want you to work with me." Yeah. I was like, "Want me to work with? What are you talking about?" He goes, "Yeah, give me some names and." We'll, we'll cut you a deal. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to give you shit, you know? I'm not going to give you any names. He goes, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. He goes, all right. So he hangs up the phone. Um, and right before he could file it, I go and get a job, mm -hmm. you know? It was a, con a, a, a collections for student loans for a government contract. Yeah. You know, so before I can go on my background, mm -hmm. I got the job. Yeah. Um, so he must have filed it. I didn't, I ran away from it for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and I'm already working at the job and I'm, st I'm starting from scratch again. Yeah. I lost the house. I lost everything. You know, I had no money. No more dealing? Nothing. I stopped everything. Yeah. But I didn't stop the drugs. Okay. Or the alcohol. The, uh, consum the consumption of it. Everything. Okay. Yeah. Everything was still heavy. Yeah. Um, so then I'm working at this job and then in the midst of all that, um, my cousins, they were going to church mm -hmm. and they would always invite me over. I'm like, I don't want to go to Bible study. I don't want to go to Bible study. Yeah. So eventually they bribe me with tacos. <laughs> Your favorite. My favorite, yeah. you know. So I go over for tacos. Um, and then the message that they were giving, it was just, it was tugging at my heart. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, no, this this feels right. So I go to I go to church that same Sunday. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the pastor right here at Faith, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Reeves. Yeah. Everything he was just telling me was just like, man, this is this was meant for me. Yeah. So then he's telling everybody, you know, if you feel God tugging at your heart, stand up. Um, you know, stay, keep looking at me, keep looking at me. I walk up, you know. Um. So I I walked up, you know, and that day I I, I surrendered, gave myself to 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 Christ. Um. So then the next thing was to get baptized, mm -hmm. you know. Um. So I got baptized. So now something, well, God told me to call the court. He goes, if you're going to do things, you need to do things right. Yeah. So I call the court. Sure enough, yeah, I had a warrant, an outstanding warrant for a felony. Um, so I'm like, man. All right. So yeah. I took care of it. Mm -hmm. I got a lawyer. Um, so finally when they, when they presented to me, it was six years. Yeah. You know? And I was like, six years? Like, man, I'm going to be out when I'm 28. Yeah. You know? 27. But then I remember, like, you know, God's my homie. He yeah. says he's going to take care of me. Yeah. He, he knows my heart now. He knows I'm not that person anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so then after a lot of fighting, after everything was said and done, basically they gave me a deal, 180 days of uh, jail yeah. or 180 days of community service. So I took the community service. Mm -hmm. So for four years, every weekend I was doing community service. Yeah. Um, and then in the midst of all that, I'm 24. Boom, catch another case, you know, another DUI. Yeah. No, that's three. Third one. Third one. As I'm taking care of this felony case. Yeah. So I'm like, man, dude, I can't I can't catch a break, you mm -hmm. know? But I was being selfish. I wasn't oh, this is I wasn't thinking this was my fault. Yeah. I was I kept blaming my past, you know? Mm -hmm. And then yeah, sure enough, I got the same lawyer to take care of the same the other DUI. Yeah. Um, I did a little jail on that. Um, I don't know how many jail paper, you know, those, those mug shots they give you. Yeah. I probably had a stack of them by the time <laughs> from 18 to 24. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I was, how much, I don't know how many, you ever heard of a tequila shooters? Yeah. Corona uh -huh. and then tequila. Mm -hmm. I probably had 12 of those. And then, um, Damn. so 12 shots basically. Yeah. A lot of cocaine, you know. I was sprung out, probably going 100 on the freeway, and the cops pulled me over. Yeah. So they took me in. But, yeah, I, I thought, man, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to prison because yeah. that, that's what was basically hanging over my head. Mm -hmm. But this, uh, the lawyer that I got was a good lawyer. He got me out of it. So to go back to your answer, when I told you, finally, I'm done. Mm -hmm. So I didn't take care of all that stuff until I stopped drinking, which was three years ago. So from the three years ago, when I started 
t- taking uh, my competitions and all that serious is yeah. when I stopped drinking. I've been sober for three years now. Mm-hmm. I've been taking care of all that. So last week is the day that I'm fi- I was finally off probation. Yeah. Twelve years later. After everything. After all that nonsense, you know. Wow. Um. But um. Before what what made me stop drinking, because I was drinking every weekend. Mm-hmm. Bad, you know. Um. Always hung over, always doing God knows what, you know. I just wouldn't stop. Nothing can stop me. Yeah. You know, I was I was wrecking lives, harming people, mm-hmm. you know. And um it's just I don't know. For for me it was um it was just like a way to, to, to escape my past, mm-hmm. you know, just to keep drinking, just to keep drinking. And I wouldn't wouldn't have to think about my mom's death or why this happened to me. It was just you know, I yeah. was just I wouldn't remember anything. Mm-hmm. Um so with my fiance now, um, we went to a, a little poker gathering on New Year's, and then um, I sent her home. So she goes home, and then it's just me, my friends, and we're drinking. And then I disappear. I go somewhere else, you know, and um, I'm getting hammered. And next thing you know, the night, the day's over. It's like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning, and um, I'm taking Uber back home. Yeah. And then finally, life starts hitting me. Uh, I felt, well, kind of go back. I stopped going to church. I kind of fell off. And then that's how I, mm-hmm. everything started going bad again for me. Yeah. I started going back to my old ways. And I think the dirt DUI was just pretty much God punishing me. You know? For not going, yeah. Yeah. You're not going to You, you want to fall off? And th- this is the life you're going to keep going back to. Yeah. And it just kept getting worse, you know? So, yeah. So, I'm going home. And it's just like he smacked me, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, man, my fiance's pregnant. I keep ditching her every weekend, you know. And during the relationship, the same, I would just go off and get drunk and disappear yeah. for three, four days. And I don't, I don't know, you know, just I would be gone. Mm-hmm. No one would hear from me. And I was like, man, she's pregnant. Is it, do I want to keep living like this? Yeah. Like, what, what am I doing? You know, is this, am I gonna keep the cycle going? Am I gonna keep blaming my past? Mm-hmm. Or you got to do something, you know? So I finally get to her house, and she's there crying, you know? She's crying. Why do you keep doing this, you know? I have your son. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think I want him to be around you. Yeah. I'll do this on my own. So you you either need to decide if, if, if you want to be in his life, you're, you're done doing all this. And the next day, that was it. I cut it cold turkey. So I, I, I had to find something to to keep me grounded yeah like an addict you know if you want to stop one thing you need to do something else yeah. to keep you busy yeah. so um i started went back into the gym in the midst of all those years me doing all that mm-hmm. i would still always work out yeah that was like my me my me time yeah you know so but i would never diet obviously you know so i would just work out drink do drugs mm-hmm. do what i wanted you know yeah um so I started working out again. I started dieting, <clears throat> and then I lost a lot of weight. And I said, like, "I need something more," you know. Yeah. So then I thought about when I was in high school, when I was trying to compete. I'm like, "Man, I, th- I think I'm mentally stable to finally compete because your mind needs to be right." You we know? just talked about that earlier. Your, your, your mind has to be there because if it's not, it's not going to happen. So then that's when I reached out to um to my old coach. Um, we talked, and then after that, it's just, I never looked back, you know? I mm-hmm. stopped drinking. I stopped all the nonsense. I stopped the, the drugs. I stopped everything. And over from, in these last three years, I mean, everything from my business to to, to, to bodybuilding, me with my kids, just yeah. everything, everything just started getting better, you know? And I wouldn't imagine any of this years ago mm-hmm. because I was such in a dark place. Yeah. I almost felt like empty, you know, mm-hmm. I had nobody. So now I have my kids, you know, it's like, and everybody, all the bad stuff I did, you know, before. Yeah. Um, I harmed a lot of people. I harmed a lot of lives. I did a lot of messed up things, you know, to society. Mm-hmm. So I just feel like God's allowing me to give back. And he, had, he didn't let me die. Those, those multiple times I almost died 
whether it was suicide or was, whether it was an overdose um, or other situations, you know, he didn't let me die, you know, and it's all unfolding now. Yeah. He has a purpose, you know, but what I feel is um, if you keep testing the waters, no matter how many signs he gives you, eventually you're going to kill yourself, mm -hmm. you know, but if you see the signs, okay, I'm alive. He let me live, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Oh, I'm alive again. Yeah. You need to open your eyes at one point, you know. So now it's like me. I'm able to give back to society what I'm doing, you know. So everybody God's bringing into my life, it's keeping me busy. Mm -hmm. Me seeing them smile, me seeing them change, it, it gets me going. Yeah. It kind of it makes me feel like okay, we're doing something for people now. You have a new purpose. That's your that, new purpose. That's my new purpose. Yeah. So I I feel a hundred times better. Um. I mean, I all the, everyone that I've, I've helped out, you know, it just it makes me it makes me happy, genuinely yeah. happy, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, and that's the reason why I'm so hard on people. Yeah, I have no pity, you know, because I was in I was in their shoes too. Yeah, whether they say they're overweight, I mean, I was heavy at one point. Um, I was also skinny from the drugs, whatever shoes they were in, I was there, if not worse. Mm -hmm. They liked to drink, so did I. They like to do drugs, so did I. You feel sorry for yourself, so did I. You feel alone, so did I. You have no hope, I felt the same, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I can relate to a lot of these people. So when they give me excuses, that that's why I am the yeah. way that I am. Because that's just the mindset. Right. Mm. That's just the mindset that they, 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 that they tell themselves, you know? And what I tell them is, I can tell you the most exp inspirational, motivational, quote, or story, whatever you want to hear, but at the end of the day, you need to want the change for yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And three years ago, I finally wanted that change, yeah. and that's what made me change, you know? So now I'm able to kind of, with everything I've been through, give back and show everybody it's possible, mm -hmm. you know? You don't have to keep living where you're living, how you're living, how you're staying, or the people around you. Where are all those people when I got raided and I had nowhere to live? Yeah. Nowhere. Yeah. Nowhere. You know, where were all those people at when, when I almost died in the hospital? Nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know, where are all them now? Nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why now, I mean, I don't I don't really have friends that I talk to on a daily. It's just pretty much me and my kids and my clients, the people that I'm around. Yeah. You know, so that opened up my eyes a lot with, and it helps me just focus on myself. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't be alone, right, if you can't be alone and find yourself, you're never going to find yourself because you're too stuck on being around friends who like to drink, friends who like to do drugs, friends who like to do nonsense. Mm -hmm. And if you're around that all the time, you're going to fall into the same situation. So how do you get out of that? Take yourself out of that. Yeah. Find yourself. But people can't be by themselves. They're too scared. They're too afraid to be alone. Mm -hmm. They need it. They, it's almost like uh, they, they need to feel wanted. Or they need to mm -hmm. feel like they're a part of something. Yeah. But in reality, if you're a part of something, if you're doing what other people are doing, what, what does that make you? A follower. Right. Now, would you rather be a follower or do you want to be a leader? Yeah. How are you going to help people if you just follow? You know? Mm -hmm. So and that, these are all the things that I've learned, you know, that's yeah. helped me. Things that I had to go through. Nobody taught me any of this. You know? Nobody taught me. I didn't have a dad to show me how to be a man. To this day, I don't know who my real dad is, you know? Um, so it's, it's just th this is this is who I am now, you know? I've learned a lot. I had to grow up really young, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Now I don't I don't cry about the past. I don't I don't dwell on it. When I found God, I was able to forgive my mom. I was able to forgive everybody who who, who didn't accept me, who did me wrong. Mm -hmm. And till this day I, I still I take all that with me. I'm 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 more, I'm more in peace. Yeah. Um I mean, don't get me wrong, it it still hits me. For some reason, I can't go to my mom's funeral. I think I've only been to her her, her her um at the her where the cemeteries at yeah probably a handful of times i think something deep down inside still takes blame as much as people say it wasn't your fault you know she did what she did mm -hmm. I, it's just hard for me to go over there you yeah. know but um it, it's just it's been a crazy ride yeah you know it's been a crazy ride <clears throat> um but that's why i don't give up now with with my shows or with my clients yeah i don't give up on people you know, they're going to give up on themselves before I give up on them. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that's what made me a stronger person. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm able to, to, to withstand a lot of things, um, 
but it, it it really is hard for me to have pity for people to feel sorry yeah you know well you know um not to go back on 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 you know you just mentioned it right now you still have a little bit of guilt no. for your mom your dear mom but i i i strongly uh, i challenge you to to do that to cl to close that to go to the cemetery by yourself and just sit there and and have that conversation with yourself with her yeah because that's something that you can tell when you were telling us a story that you still feel that guilt you can still tell you see it in your eyes you just you, you could tell you still you're still holding that guilt yeah. now you're, you're a better person and you, for sure 100 percent you're a better person but it seems like you still have that little bit of that guilt you know i don't think it's gonna come back or anything like that like you know the, <laughs> the bad nando but, no. No, but and, uh, and you're right you're my my fiance has told me that too yeah you know she she feels that she feels the same way like she let it go stop feeling guilty yeah but i, I it, it, it's just really hard you know yeah it's just it's really hard because that that what if always always comes to play right. what if i would have never left but i mean when you're 12 and you get the opportunity to do whatever you want of course you're gonna do it right you know but to also deal with that at such a young age it messes with you of course yeah. you know so it, it was just, it was just a crazy it was a crazy upbringing mm -hmm. you know yeah but i mean i i'll accept the challenge yeah i don't know when i'm gonna do it yeah but I'll, I'll do it and i think the more that i don't go also makes me feel worse because mm. it's been years right she passed in uh was 2000 2005 i want to say so i was a sophomore a sophomore and then i graduated in 2007 that's yeah, so 2005 yeah yeah, yeah i mean it, it's like you know the nando we have right here is like everybody loves nando right can you imagine if you if you challenge yourself and you go over that hump the kind of nando that you're gonna have the more empowerment that you're gonna have over yourself right mm -hmm. that's that's the way i see it right now yeah you know mm -hmm. that, that uh that's tough oh yeah it's tough i i remember with with my uh grandpa before he before he even passed you know we would talk about him passing and he, and, and he him saying you know my my time's coming this and that you know and uh and i and i told him i mm -hmm. told him i said i won't visit you after we bury you you know mm -hmm. and that and it, it took me a, a little over a year and i had a dream where he was where he's like how come you didn't how, how, come, how come you haven't come to see me yeah you know and it hit me and then i, I finally went mm -hmm. you know and that was hard for me yeah you know it did uh, i broke down there and i was with my son and uh uh it's just this is tough yeah it's, it's a it's a great challenge um just for your mental yeah i mean i've seen people die whatever hmm. but i just now i can't even go to a funeral open casket because i feel when i see the person the little five seconds that i gave my mom yeah that's all i see you know hmm. and i wish i could have i could have seen her longer yeah you know i don't know if it's closure Oh, I I don't I don't know, but I know there's something inside me still that feels empty, you know. Yeah. Because throughout all those years, I mean, they were my cousins that I was living with, but mm. it just wasn't the same. Yeah. I would go to my friend's house, and they would be with their mom and dad. Yeah. Their mom and dad be buying them stuff, and I'm here borrowing clothes from them. Mm -hmm. So I never had money, you know. I never had new stuff. I never had cool things, you know. And that that's how I was. That's how I was living. Yeah. Um. You know, and I, I don't know. This is just a lot of things, you know. Until this day, I mean, I've, I've tried to look up my brothers and sisters and nothing. Yeah. You know, nothing. So I've tried and I tried. I just, I've maybe God feels like it's not the right time. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe he doesn't want me to. Or I, I don't know, you know. Yeah. But I do want to talk to her and ask her what, you know, things. Yeah. You know, see what the heck was going on in her head. Mm -hmm. How can she abandon a little 13-year-old in the Metrolink in L.A.? Yeah. You know, God forbid I landed with a bunch of bums and just killed me or right. something, you know? Or that cholo took you in and said, why don't you come with us? Yeah, it could have been anything. Yeah. At that point, I had no identity. Yeah, right. I had no nothing. Yeah. You know, she could have said I ran away. I could have died. She would have been happy, mm -hmm. you know, which was probably her plan. I mean, I, yeah. God had other plans for me. Yeah. You know, and he still does. He still yeah. does. So, um, I said, I... I this is all God, you know. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't be where I'm at without His power, um, the grace of Him, 
as as messed up things that I did, mm-hmm. he forgives and he gives chances, you know. So yeah. um, I'm very appreciative for life, you know, the multiple times that I was given it, you know. And then this time I'm not I'm not taking it for granted, yeah, you know. So I know there's people out there that that, that feel the same way, or they don't want to talk to anybody, they don't want to open up. <clears throat> One thing I can tell them is um, when I was writing those letters, I mean, I was bawling, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. I had nobody to call, you know, because um, I felt like I had no family. Yeah. I felt alone. No one to cry to, no parents to cry to. Mm-hmm. I had nobody, you know? So that made it worse. Yeah. But my advice is if you have somebody, talk to them. Talk to them. Mm-hmm. The best thing you can do is just reach out and talk to them. Yeah. And if you don't want to talk to them, then find someone else that you feel comfortable with. Right. Because you need to let it out. Because the more and more you hold it, the more dangerous you will be to yourself. Mm -hmm. And God forbid you do something bad to yourself, you harm yourself. You know, people are drinking a lot to forget about their past. Right. Or they're just addicted to it. Yeah. Um. And 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 then you got to cut it out. Yeah. It, it only leads to one direction you know right, right. you're gonna lose everything whether it's your job whether it's your family um you're going to go broke mm-hmm. you know with, with alcohol with drugs with anything yeah. it only leads in, to one direction yeah you know yeah never i mean never wait till you hit rock bottom right why or why wait to hit yeah. rock bottom and that yeah. was me i hit yeah. rock bottom multiple times yeah but somehow you know that's why i i like to say i'm, I'm a grinder you know yeah, yeah. You don't you don't you don't know you don't know what hustle is until you hit rock bottom. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that man, it's no fun down there. Yeah. Because that's what ends up happening. Yep. You know, and if you have no one to to support you, no one re- revol- around you, you know, to and you're on your own, mm-hmm. it's gonna make it way way harder. Yeah. You know, and that was me. Yep. You know, but I said I didn't. Something in me said to keep going. You know, something told me to keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. And I did. You know. I'm just, I'm just glad I didn't roll over yeah. in the cliff. Yeah. No, I think we're all glad at this point that you didn't roll over. But yeah. we definitely want to thank you for coming out here. You don't even know how much it means. When, like People um, are out there and, and they're telling me, you know, from all the episodes, they're like, man, it really means a lot, you know, to hear Fernando talking about his his uh, his journey just in the weight training. The, the small yeah. S- yeah, small yeah. smidget. Is smidget a word? Yes. The smidget it's of a, a story that you midget. told. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of the, the that you told in that first episode and now they get to hear the full length of it and then oh, they yeah. actually get to get more in depth of it so it's it's yeah. it's pretty so this is what a prequel the pre- right? <laughs> this yeah. is a prequel yeah this is a go. prequel yeah this is yeah. what it is yep well right. thanks very much man. i thanks appreciate you guys man yeah, for sure man thanks for uh sharing that story for me that it was a little tough yeah uh, I, I got a little choked up right we'll edit that out no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh Man, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back and just sharing that. I, like I like I said before, like after you had told us that off air, I was like, that's it. That's what people need to hear. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it's you know? not easy, you know. Coming, you know, he, he can tell you, it's not easy just putting it out there. Mm-hmm. And and you and you definitely did, you did that. Hard. You put it out there. Definitely. And if there's anybody out there who who wants to talk to me, I mean, I'm more than willing. I'm an open book. Right. They could DM me. They could text me. My number's all over Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm willing to talk to whoever. Yeah, you know, that that's what this is for. Right. God has given us a platform, mm-hmm. that we need to use it. Right, yeah. you know, because if we close our mouths, how are we going to help people? Right, right. You know, and I I know this is why you put me here. So, if there's anybody out there that that wants to talk and wants to needs help or just whatever the case may be, let me know. I mean, I'll be more than happy to to do what I can at least. Yeah, you know, to to get you out of any sticky situation that you might be with yourself. So the last thing you want to do is harm yourself, right? Yeah. Right. It's the last thing. Yep. Well, you heard him. Yeah, man. That was heavy. That is. <laughs> but thanks a lot. I appreciate, appreciate you being out here, man. Yeah, Thank go Dodgers, right? Let's go, go Dodgers. Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We'll see everybody. We're signing off. That's it. That's it. See you later, guys. Bye.